guys, is anyone in the audience? Yeah, I guess not. Can see if anybody. Uh, I don't know if there are any any public comments out there. If you can, you can raise your hand or send me a send me a chat. But it looks like people might be waiting for specific agenda items. Okay, all right. So we will move next to uh, the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? And I believe that the uh, town manager wanted to add. Uh, yes, I, I I already updated the agenda, but there was one item there um, for forty nine hundred Cumberland uh, request for a building permit extension. Okay, so uh, that needs. So uh, I'm ready to take a motion to approve the agenda, and please uh, oh, specify wait, the I, amendment. Can I recommend or say that um, you know I wanted to see. If we could move the 4806 Grantham to um, when the Levines would be able to participate. No, no, that's for, that's, that's uh, for uh, it'll be a different here. Oh, later right. in the yeah, yeah. evening? Yes, yes. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the agenda? Yeah, I'm going to approve the agenda as for the second. And as amended to include the building extension for 4900. Okay, thank you. It's not our credit, but yes, it's probably not in the electronic. Thank you. Is there a second? There's a. I think there was a. No need to. What, what Steve said was as as published, which includes the updated 4900. So either we can specify. Second. I think that's where we're going. I'll second it. Okay. okay. Is there a discussion? We don't need Hearing that, all those in favor. All right. Okay, thank you. The next item is consideration of the consent agenda. Is there a motion? No, we approve the consent agenda. Second. I heard uh, Councilor Kumar second. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All those in favor, thank you. Okay, the next item is the aforementioned item, public hearing motion to consider approval of the three month permit extension requested by Monica Gomez and Guillermo. Was really a bitch to the existing permit for construction of the side addition to the home located on the property at 4900 Cumberland Avenue, Mr. Town Manager. Yeah, uh, they, uh, you might recall, we did grant an extension before uh, one of the property owners there um, was dealing with some health problems. Um, so they're, they, the work's uh, begun in earnest at this point, and it's expected that. They'd be able to complete within the three three month extension that they're requesting. And do the applicants? Um, I they they submitted comments, um, so okay. I I uploaded them for the council and okay. the uh, and those are um, um, and D Doug also engineer. had a recommendation. I I think Doug is joining us, so if Doug wants to. Is he, is Doug, Mr. Lamar, do you have anything you wanted to say? Uh, nothing further. Okay, thank you. Council President Circa, do you have any questions? No questions. Councilmember Barr, no questions. Councilmember Heller, no questions. Councilmember Kumar, not a problem. Councilmember Rovac, no. Does any uh, resident or guest wish to comment on this agenda item? Uh, no comments uh, online, no. Okay, thank you, Council. Are you ready to make a motion? What did you want to do? No. Uh, I, I, I recommend we approve three month permit extension uh, requested by Monica Gomez and Galermo Israelovich to the existing permit for construction of the site addition of home located on the property. Pretty much another time from that. Second. I heard Council on the mark. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Okay, yes, thank you. The next item, public hearing motion to consider approval of a building permit application submitted by Marika and Michael Meyer for the demolition and construction of a rear addition to the house located on the property at 4523 Dorset Avenue. I'll that one Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, today is the going to begin the hearing. Today is March, May 1st, 2023. This is a hearing before the town of Somerset Council for application 23511 to consider a building permit application for the property located 
at 4523 Dorset Avenue, submitted by Marika and Michael Meyer. This hearing is being audio recorded. We ask that all speakers speak one at a time, addressing the council when called upon, and to state their name and address for the record before making public comment. The hearing will observe the following order. First, the Somerset Town staff will present their findings and submit for the record a report on the application under consideration. Next, the applicant will present the application or comment on the report. Next, the Somerset Town Council will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff relevant to the application at hand. Next, other interested parties will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or present comments to the council. Next, following that, the applicant will have the opportunity for rebuttal testimony, after which the public comment period of the hearing shall be completed and the record closed. Finally, the council will deliberate and discuss among themselves the merits of the case, the findings of fact, and conclusions. The council may make a motion on a permanent decision. The town attorney may be asked to write a decision, and the town manager will be asked to issue a permit with the conditions voted on by the council and enumerated in the town attorney's decision. We now begin the hearing with the presentation of the Somerset staff findings and reports. Uh, Sorry. Thank you. Uh, I will just turn it over to um, our building administrator, uh, Mr. Doug Lohmer. Uh The property owners have submitted a building permit application to add two small additions at the rear of the existing house. First addition is approximately five feet by two and a half feet at the left side of the kitchen at the rear. The other addition is approximately six feet by two and a half feet on the right side of the kitchen for a total of 28 square feet. The county approved the building permit on February 14th. Boundary survey indicates the existing left side of the house is 8.4 feet from the property line and the right side of the house is 10.5 feet from the property line. The rear of the house is approximately 24 feet from the rear property line. Both additions will comply with these three existing setbacks and will comply with the town code. I recommend the council approve the demolition dumpster and building permits for the proposed addition at 4523 Dorset Avenue. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Now, if the applicant or representative could uh, come to the podium and either uh, you can briefly present or you can comment on the staff or whatever is best for you. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. Uh, thank you. I'm Marie Meyer, uh, applicant um, 4523 Dorset Avenue. Um, I don't have that many comments, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Council President Stark, do you have any questions? Um, just want well, to understand the, sort of understand that the, um, you're, you're adding on some a little bit of space in the back, like those two old notches I see in the diagram. Are you completely removing the existing structure back and then replacing it with a new one that's a little bit bigger? That's correct. The, the two walls that are the two exterior walls and a shed roof, we're removing those and then the current roof line already covers where the two small additions would be. So we're staying under the roof line, but the cutouts where the current footers are, were set back those two and a half feet. Um, so to deal with the, the leaks in the shed roof, we have to push out the two and a half. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Councilor Barr. Do you have any questions? I have no questions. Thank you, Councilor Rahela. No questions. Council Member Kumar. No questions. Thank you. Councilor Rova. No questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Monsieur, are, are there any, uh, is anyone in the room interested in making a comment? Or does anyone online wish to make a comment or ask a question? Not online at this point, no. Okay, thank you. So uh, now, uh, let's see here. So this includes the public portion of the hearing. The record is now closed. The council may now discuss and deliberate on the findings of fact and conclusions of law. You may vote on the application. And yes, you may sit down. And I will turn it over to Council President Circo to leave the discussion and the decision. Okay. So this seems like a pretty straightforward, uh, modest building 
renovation project. Um, I don't have any questions recently, so I just think we could go around and see if anyone does have any questions or comments as well. It's very straightforward and clear, and I have no comments. Okay. Stay with me. Severe. Compliance with the code, no variance. Okay. Shannon? Same. Okay. So, so we're ready to approve it. All right. Um, I recommend that we approve building permit applications submitted by Rita and Michael Meyer for the demolition and construction of a new revision in the house located on the property at 4523 Dorset Avenue. Second. Okay, Mr. Tennant, is that the exit? Yes, yes, Okay, thank you. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. So this concludes the public hearing. Thank you to all the parties. The town attorney will now issue a written decision based on the council motion, and the decision will be given to all interested parties by the town manager. Although, I guess. Is that supposed to read that? Well, since yeah. there's no objection, right. we won't prepare yeah. right. the decision. Yes, okay, thank you. So no decision. Thank you very much. And congratulations. Okay, the next item. This is. Uh, do I have? I don't have a script for this. One. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, so this is uh, regarding forty eight sixteen Essex Avenue, and um, and I'll just read one sentence. Continuation of the hearing for the building permit. Application submitted by James Gillis and Allison Hooker for the demolition of an accessory building for the property located 4816 Essex Avenue. The applicant is seeking variances of three feet nine inches and six feet three inches for the placement of an HVAC unit in the side yard of the property. Today is May 1st, 2023. This is a hearing, continuation of the hearing before the Town of Somerset Council for application 23431 to consider a building permit application and variance for the property located at 4816 Essex Avenue submitted by James Gillis and Allison Hooker. This hearing is being audio recorded. We ask that all speakers speak one at a time, addressing the council and call the bond and to state their name and address for the record before making public comment. The hearing will observe the following order. First, the Somerset Town staff, Present their findings, submit for the record a report on the application under consideration. Next, the applicant will present the application or make comments on the staff report. Next, the Somerset Town Council will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff relevant to the application at hand. Next, other interested parties will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or present comments to the council. Following that, the applicant will have the opportunity for rebuttal testimony, after which the public comment period of the hearing shall be completed and the record closed. Finally, the council will deliberate and discuss among themselves the merits of the case, the findings of fact and conclusions. The council may make a motion on a permit decision. The town attorney may be asked to write a decision and the town manager will be asked to issue a permit with the conditions voted on by the council and enumerated in the town attorney's decision. So we will now begin the hearing with the presentation of the Somerset staff findings and reports, Mr. Town Manager. Yeah, as, as the mayor mentioned, this is a continuation of last month's hearing. The council approved uh, a, a demolition and uh, dumpster permit last month, um, but continued the hearing for the variance, which was to install a second HVAC unit on the side of the house. So just as a quick reminder, um, they they were applying for the installation of two HVAC units on the west side of the property. One is a replacement, the other is a new one. It's an identical unit behind the first if you're looking at the house. Um, so the home has an existing HVAC unit that's considered existing non-conforming, which means that if it were built new, it wouldn't conform with the town code because it encroaches into the side setback. The town permits the replacement of HVAC units in the same location, even if they're non-conforming. So the first HVAC unit, excuse me, uh, HVAC unit does not require a variance. However, the second HVAC unit does require a variance, although it does not increase the side setbacks as it's in the same location uh, directly behind the first unit when facing the house. Uh, at the first hearing, the council also considered a proposed generator on the same side of the house. 
And the town attorney advised at that point that the generator would also require a variance for the same reasons as the HVAC unit. And after deliberation, the council continued the hearing, advised the applicant to look at alternative designs that would cut down on the cumulative noise that was generated from uh, the HVAC units and the generator. Uh, so the applicant <laughs> has uh, revised their application and removed the generator. So the only variance now being considered is for that second HVAC unit. Uh, the applicant's new site plan also shows plants at the front of the units and optional evergreen shrubs on the other side of the driveway, which is a shared driveway. So it would only be permitted with the acceptance of the neighbor as the two properties share that driveway. Uh, finally, the applicant uh, is planning to purchase new Bosch units, is that correct? Which are uh, measured at 56 decibels compared to the Lennox units, which were originally proposed and measure at 70 decibels. Um, I did a little back of the envelope math. Um, so double, doubled sound intensity is an added three decibels. So the two units combined would go from 56 to 59 decibels, and that's typically measured three feet from the units. And the property line is 4.1 feet, so that accounts for about a 2.7 decibel dissipation of sound. So that brings it to about 56.3 decibels. Montgomery County specifies on its website, they also account for about a 2.5 decibel grace to account for inaccuracies. So the decibel level from the two HV units is, is within that margin of error for acceptable nighttime noise in residential areas. Um, and uh, otherwise I'll turn it over to uh, our building administrator for uh, his uh, portion of the staff report as well. Uh, since that's also up for a building permit, do you want me to recap some of the building issues from the last hearing? Yes. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Thank you, Doug. Okay, sure. Uh, the applicant submitted a building permit application to make exterior renovations to the existing house. They also proposed some interior renovations. Plan proposes, proposes to remove 620 square foot section of a structure on the left rear of the house. The existing slab will remain at the left rear. The existing house has the following setbacks. The front setback is 25 feet from the front property line along Essex. The left side is 7.6 feet. The right side is 7.1. And the rear of the existing structure is 33 feet. And after they remove that structure, the rear setback will be 64 feet. As Matt mentioned, the existing uh, HVAC unit will be replaced, and the second HVAC unit needs to have a variance and a sound check. And the county issued their building permit on April 5th, 2023, and that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. That, that concludes. Yes. Uh, uh, enjoy. I don't think Dr. Feather uh, had any. I think he has a tree protection plan. Um, did, you, did you really add Dr. Feather, is there anything that you wanted to add? I think they're they're far enough away, and there's no trees that are being um, he, he's here. removed. Uh, he it's off the driveway. He was here. Oh, he had it, it, hasn't, it hasn't changed from the last uh, hearing. Can okay. you hear me? Yes. yes. Is that is that all you wanted to say? Yeah, I, nothing okay, changed you. from the last hearing. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so now the applicant has the opportunity to come in the staff report, add anything they'd like to their um, application and hi thank you this is neighbor um matt explained it perfectly so i don't have that much more to add uh to what he said but i'm here to answer any questions if anybody has uh, thank you so much for coming in here tonight council president sir can you have any questions um no questions just want to say thank you for addressing some of the sound concerns noise concerns Councilor yeah, I wasn't here for the last hearing. Um, 
And I, to me, it seems straightforward. The noise level of the new air conditioners is below even a soft conversation at that, that level. So I have no concerns that the neighbors will be disturbed and no concerns at all. Thank you, Councillor Heller. When you were here um, last time, had you talked about replacing the um, the, the HVAC systems? Do, are these, is this new that you're putting in the Bosch instead of the um, Lennox? So yes, so we we changed the uh, condenser. So we chose an, another system that is much as quieter. Okay, that, that's what I wanted. Thank you. And thanks for doing that. Yes, remember, you know, thanks for me as well for both changing the unit, but also you've decided not to go with the generator. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, so appreciate it. I have one clarifying question. I'm assuming that both units will not be run at the same time. Uh, not all the time, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Back to you. Wasn't there a talk about moving it to like potentially the other side? Yes, but um, uh, in speaking with the HVAC uh, contractor, they are um, encouraging to keep them on the right side because of service and maintenance. So there's more room and then and, uh, and there's more more air on the right 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 hand side, so they prefer to install it there. And that's why we also changed the uh, condenser to a much quieter unit in order to get on the right side. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. So we will now open the floor for public comment. Does anyone in the town hall wish to comment or is anyone online? Uh, there are no online comments. I did have a question. Just, but there was a question or comment from. There was one neighbor. neighbor, has she been updated? Yes, this? yes. Uh, the owner did email uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Kelly Carroll um, these, these these changes, and they they also sent her the spec sheets of the new AC condenser. She's she aware, I have the email about the new For recollection, there, there had been some comment in the past. Just no so, so if you have an email, perhaps that, have you submitted that for the, the record? Uh, the email? No. I'm going to have it here. So it's an email from it's the neighbor? It's an email from the, the owner to the neighbor. Yes. So I don't, did the neighbor respond, Mr. Mayor? I don't, I, that I don't have the answer to that. All I have is a copy of the email that the owner sent to the neighbor. But the neighbor did respond to you? Not to me, no. So should we put that in the record? Uh, the council can accept the testimony or ask for a copy. But you can accept the testimony. Yes, we do. You accepted it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So this concludes the public portion of the hearing. The record is now closed. I will turn it over to the council president. The deliberation. Thank you. Okay. Again, I think we sort of discussed it a little bit as we were asking questions. Um, I don't have any further issues or comments. Just to cover a little quick, Robin, give any. No, as I said, the question these are really quiet air conditioning yeah. units. Yeah. 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 Amy, I've gone an extra mile to address. Okay. Just a second. Okay. Um, I don't have a question. Okay. Yeah. So then I move that we, that the council approve the uh, application submitted by Jane Phyllis and Allison Hooker for the demolition of accessory building for the property at 16 Essex Avenue. Um, with variances of 3.9 feet, 6.3 feet for placement on an HVAC unit in the side door of the property. Second. Is there discussion? Here, is that that's the technical discussion? It is, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Typically, with respect to condenser installations, the council would also condition approval on successful sound tests to confirm that the equipment complies with county standards. And if not, the applicant. Yes, has isn't that required? Or is it not required? It is it's, required. It's, the noise control section of our code requires compliance, but I think it's administratively helpful to add that in okay. addition to the so, statement. Please, so you add that. Okay, so you add that and do some use. Okay, thank you. So is there discussion on the motion as amended? Hearing none, all this in favor. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you thank for. You. Thank, Thank you. you for working so closely and, and to make it um, better for everyone. Um, so before I call the um, 
agenda item for 4806 Grantham Avenue. I believe there was a, is there not, Mr. Town Attorney, a preliminary matter? Yes, Mr. Mayor. That um, the it, neighbors, the Levines, have submitted a request that tonight's hearing be continued until another time that they are available. They are out of town, apparently attending a, a son's graduation. That request has been shared with the applicant whose response is also provided in the record. The council has seen those. So preliminarily, the council could address that request for a continuance. And, and so, um, um, but, but I can I can uh, add that myself to the agenda as as an item, right? And if I do, then the um, doesn't the parties making the um, making the motion um, they would have the opportunity to if yes. they're not here. Yes. The mayor would be appropriate to ask. Or offer the opportunity for the movement and the responder, and then and then the person. and then the applicant for the property has the opportunity to address the council, correct? Yes, because I think this is the request of council member right back. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I guess you want this preliminary matter. Well, yeah, I mean, I just I, I felt that um, you know the Levines really have been very active and engaged with this whole process. You, well, that you can talk when you if you when you discuss it, but you're. So you're requesting that that the council preliminary decide on the yeah. request of the Levines. Yeah. Okay. So I think, um, and correct me, Mr. Town Attorney. So the Levines, I take it the Levines aren't here. Is that right? Uh, correct. Okay. Okay. So so and the council received their request. So now I think we need to offer the applicant the opportunity to address the case. To address the request, yeah, so, Mr. Mayor. So I want to clarify something, Mr. Mayor. That is not on the agenda, though. Right? The application is on the agenda. So we can we address the continuation independent on the application? Wouldn't we discuss we, the application and then discuss the Levine's request as part of the application? I'll let you tell you That's an option for that's what efficiency. historically we've done, if I'm not no, mistaken. No, I think we did. I think. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. I was going to say for efficiency, I think it does make sense to address the request first. Okay. And, and we did that previously. Okay. It's we just not on the agenda. So, you know, it's, a, it's a, I, either it's part of what, and we just approved the agenda. Well, it's not on the agenda session. because the request came in after the agenda was announced, was produced. But we just, we just accepted the agenda, the motion to accept the right. agenda. So, but, but, Chad was told at the beginning. So wait till actually, actually, um, you know, actually, probably um, I should have added it then, right, Mr. Tennyson? Because we got the request before. Tonight. I'm fine with discussing right. this. Okay. okay. So in any case, I think we, I think that, um, that um, the applicant, I mean, not the applicant, the petitioner made a request, and now for the tenant attorney. The applicant for the property needs to address that before the council deliberates on whether you're going to grant the, the uh, petition. I, what do you call them? The petitioner or something? For the, the not the movement. Applicant, whatever they are. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, and it may also help for me to just explain how okay. the code yes. works okay, please, with yes. respect to scheduling. Please, yeah. So, the, the code does provide, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. That if an application is submitted before the 15th day of the month, right. it is automatically placed on the agenda and council's next regularly scheduled agenda. Right. There, there may have been some misunderstanding based on what I read with respect to the request and the response as to who's, who chooses the date. The code specifies that if you make it in that window, you're on the next meeting agenda. Right. However, the code provides that the council has discretion to continue a request. And so that's why the manager and I had recommended that the neighbors and the applicant be informed that the request would be presented to the council at the outset of the hearing for the council to decide whether or not to exercise that discretion. I'm a bit, no. admittedly a bit turned around. I, I have a question. Did we follow all process in informing neighbors as part of this 
process. So I was about to explain that as well. Thank you. So the code requires a neighbor certification or neighbor signature sheet that you're all familiar yes. with. Yes. And if neighbors aren't able to sign that sheet, the applicant is supposed to provide an explanation of their efforts to get those signatures. So the applicant sent an email on April 10th to the Levines with a copy of the application and indicating that they were hopeful that their request would be heard tonight on May 1. That was on April 10th. The code does not require the town to send additional notice to the neighbors for a standard building permit application. Yes. We do send additional notices when there's a variance. Yes, exactly. To adjoining and confronting neighbors. I hope that addresses you. That addresses you. Right. And, and I also wanted to uh, respond also to Councilman Roback because um, the town attorney explained how that we are obligated when an application comes in that's complete to put on the next agenda. And but we but we can't um, change that through email communication. So so it, the only way that could have been addressed before tonight is to have a open meeting before tonight. So you had remember you I think you had asked for that. So so does it, do you understand that now? I do. Okay, good, excellent. So make sure. So now the now uh, we afforded the opportunity for the petitioners, the Levines for this request and they are not here, but they submitted written. So now the applicant for, for this property has the opportunity to address the council in response to that request to the neighbors. So we would like to come forward. Um, and then at, at, after, after you give your uh, view on this, then the council will deliberate the request. Can we ask them questions? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, so I think we will have the the testimony and then the council, so then we can run through the council the questions. Okay. Yes, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm I'm George Myers. I am uh, uh, president of GTM Architects. I'm standing in for Luke Olson, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, we submitted every everything. Obviously, we believe our project meets all the town codes, meets the county codes. So we're here primarily just to uh, answer any questions. Uh, we're not asking for anything special. We, we need all the all the requirements. Um, okay, thank ready, you. And we're ready. Thank you. you can see we made thank we you. four people here. And they made, made quite an effort to get here. Thank you very much. Council President, do you have any questions? Um, no questions. Council um, Did uh, your neighbor uh, for Levine, uh, share their latest comments with you. Um, they arrived this afternoon. Uh, it was a three page letter. I have not seen them. No. Thank you. Did you have a question? That was my only question. Okay, Councillor Allen, you have a question? No. Councillor Lord. I have a question. You saw signatures as part of the applications on signatures on all the neighbors. Have you received signatures on all the neighbors? And is that included in our packet? I mean, I believe Luke has emailed all of the neighbors. Yes. We we but provided emails to all of the neighbors and they gave uh they gave copies of those emails to us. And we have that for all the neighbors but one neighbor. I don't know who we have that. we have their emails to all of all of all the, the neighbors. neighbors. Yes. Okay, but we don't have responses from those neighbors. I don't believe we have all of the responses. Okay. Thank you. The John question. No more. Okay, okay. Councilman Rebecca. Yeah. Um, so as far as like the Montgomery County uh permit goes, it looks like it was denied for like architectural two. It's so far, it was submitted so far, it's been approved. The zoning has been approved. It is there's a couple structural issues, which is not uncommon. They want some more structural information. There's several when you put it in for current uh, permit, there's a Structural review, I mean, a zoning review and a structural review, some of a series of reviews. Mm -hmm. So, the only one that I know that's been approved so far is the zoning. Because it says like the architectural tour two is denied. It's related to the Texas matters, but not, not, as, not, as, not yeah. anything to do with the size, the shape, or the building at all. So, do you know if you'll have to resubmit plans to Montgomery County? 
problem in, in that respect, we might have to uh, submit an explanation from our special engineer or something like that. It's, it's not uncommon to get comments from the county when we submit permits and they ask for more information. Yeah, but it would change like what what the project is that you're doing right now. No, not at all. We're not change the envelope, the exterior, the shape, the footprint, anything like that. It, it may be like, for example, wind bracing calculations is something that they may be asking for. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now I'll turn it over to the uh, council president to lead the deliberations on this request by the neighbors. So we are discussing the continuation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He's going to thank you very much, sir. So what we're discussing right now, this, I think you can sit down while we're okay. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is whether or not to grant the Levine's request for a variance of the actual hearing on this building permit, right? That's okay. Um, and I guess we could actually decide what time frame we want. We want if if we decide that a variance was appropriate, we could also decide. It's not a variance. Sorry, sorry. 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 Hey, that's what I was causing. Yeah. I saw your expression here. No, it's right. it's, no, no. It's, um, if we decide the continuance is appropriate, we could also decide whether to hold and schedule a special meeting or just defer to the next regular monthly town meeting. So, so that's what we're looking at. Um, on, on the one hand, from my perspective, the, the applicants follow their process and the standard thing would be for us to have the hearing tonight, but, but we have neighbors who have a wish to participate in person in this hearing, have concerns, and I think we should thank you too. I don't think there's not any burden on the applicant to, to have a small play. That's my thought, Robin. Well, I, I think we should ask the applicants what burden it is to continue the hearing on the, you know, we get a full but, sense of it. But to do that, we have to, now you're deliberating. So to do that, uh, I think we have to. Ask. Well, I'm, not, I'm not finished yet. Uh, uh, but I, secondly, uh, the Levines have submitted their written comments already um, in considerable detail to us, and I've read them. Um, so I understand where they're coming from. Um, so I don't see a need to continue the hearing myself. Okay. Uh, wrong, then. I'm really torn on this because I um I I, I don't understand how th th that they didn't get this sooner that they didn't understand that there was a hearing sooner and I feel like we do have a room full of people that have come to talk about this so I, I'm really torn on one hand you know I, I want I want to do this to the Levines on the other hand we have another family you know another resident that we have to take care of too so I I really don't know I'm really torn. Yes, we might go around a couple of times here. Come here. Um, I'm with Robin. I think we, you know, it was April 10th. It's pretty early in the month. The email was sent. I can understand that people might not get it in time or may not respond in time. So procedurally, everything was pretty consistent with almost any other hearing we have. That's an, done in a timely way. I think that additionally, I haven't read the email, but it sounds like there has been an email that has come in. So, you know, so we have some comments from, from the neighbors that we can put into our deliberations on the application. So we, we don't have to grant the permit application, we, but we should have the hearing given that the applicant is here and all the procedures are followed. And for that one neighbor that was not timely responding has subsequently responded uh, and have given detailed comments. So I would prefer to have the hearing and then put all this in to bear in the hearing process. I have a couple of thoughts I wanted to put on like the other sharing first. Yeah, well I think that you know the Levines um you know it's not that they it's not that they didn't want to attend it's that they couldn't attend because they're they've got a conflict um in their time. So it's not like even if they found out you know last month or something like that, you know, they submitted right away after the variance that um that they had a conflict for the for this exact thing. And you know, to go back to your point, like 
they sent an email with comments, but you just said like you didn't read them. So they sent it this afternoon. I'm sorry, I work fully. <laughs> so I have I, I'm, I'm just yet. saying yeah. that 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 but, but is, I can read it now. We can read it now. We well, I mean, it. it's really long, but like okay. um, <laughs> but but I mean, but that goes to the point of you know, they're not here to to tell us their point of view and to you know to to advocate for themselves in this setting. And, you know, so they send an email and, you know, it's not the same for them. And then the other thing that I'll say about it is that, um, you know, our, our process has kind of changed in this way where, you know, it used to be that the people had to have the Montgomery County building permit done in order to come to us. And then that was the final step. The Montgomery County building permit is not issued. And so even if we approved it tonight, they can't go and start tearing down the house tomorrow, or I don't know what kind of permit it has been approved or not approved, but my understanding is that there's no Montgomery County. And so, and so if, you know, if the Levines want to advocate for themselves, like we're not in a time crunch where we're then going to be holding up this, this well, thing, because it's that. not, we should find that out. I'm not clear on that. Well, I, I mean, I'm just speaking so, but, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I think that like we could do like a special session or, uh, you know, something where it could be fair for both parties, um, you know, to come and without us holding anything up as far as their construction. Then I'll say. Um, one, one thought I, I, additional thought I had here as we've been discussing it is um, that our town practice might might not be as comprehensive as as we desire with sending an email. I remember in the old days you had to walk around to all your neighbors, you had to ask the procedures, and it was a it was a real pain, but you oftentimes some neighbors wouldn't be there, you'd have to try several times over a couple of weeks. But eventually you got all the signatures that you needed. In email these days, my inbox, I have like over 2,000 emails that are unread. I've just given up even trying to look up. There's, there's well, I, I, yeah, wait a minute. The, our law still requires signature. Yeah, but that's for variance, too. We still do that for variance. The notice requires. When there's no variance, then it's just an FYI. Yeah, you're saying you want a signature, just, and if there's no variance. Just to clarify. Just, just in case if there's. Yeah, to clarify something. Our, our code still requires signatures, right? It requires the applicant make an effort to get signatures. And if signatures can't be obtained, then the applicant. Is to provide an explanation of the the efforts undertaken. Yeah, so it's it's, 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 it's 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 for all. Yeah, for building it, too. It's I mean, excellent. It, our our code is vague on what is actually required. It, so this so there's no requirement that there be a signature. And remember, uh, this is also just a notice requirement. So so some might argue that sending an email to a neighbor is notice, do notice, they made the effort. But that it, it's not clear in our in our code. But I, I'm, I'm really just getting that one of the comments I heard was, well, the, the notice was made on the 10th, so the Levines knew on the 10th, but they didn't really start working on this until recently. They might not have actually seen the email. I don't know. Maybe. When did they first it, respond? He spoke to him. Hold, hold, the on, tenant. hold on. He spoke to the tenant shortly there, so he knew. Okay. Yeah. When did he respond? When did the living respond? I, I saw emails around last week. On April. Well, yeah, last week. So it was, you know, today is their response, but I we started getting emails from them, so they were aware of this a week advance of this hearing, it seems to me. I thought that they had submitted right away that they had this conflict. Mm -hmm. Uh, they they did say that they had a conflict in the middle of April, roughly, or maybe a, a, a somewhat later in April, but they did not submit their written comments until this afternoon. Okay, thank you very much. No, not their written comment there, but the the that they couldn't be here. No, they submitted a continuation request before this afternoon. Yes, that's what I saw. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just. I, I did look on Monday the 24th, they sent an email that said they had returned from overseas and learned that the oh. applicant was um, applying and scheduled for May 1st. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, so what is yes, please. I guess what I wonder is why couldn't they come in on Zoom? Everybody gets can get Zoom, even if it's just on their phone. Now I we have to look at the email again, but I believe they, they said the graduation is tonight. It was said. Oh. Well, I mean, I well, think there's different parts. I don't know. Maybe part of the University of Michigan graduation was Saturday. Yes. I checked. Okay. I, so, I, I understand that there might be broader issues here. So I appreciate you raising that, Steve, that maybe procedurally we need to look at this. But in terms of this particular hearing, yeah. I feel very compelling that you to have okay. the hearing. We may not decide in favor of it, but to have the hearing. Right. So, so what I'm hearing is uh, Ron and Kabir and Debbie are in favor of proceeding with the hearing. And Shannon is your lead. Well, you need, you need to take a bit. Right, we're going to take a bit. I'm just trying to sort of summarize. Um, am, am I misstating anyone's mission or case? Why do we don't make a motion? So I don't know how to make make a sort of you you <laughs> you make the motion that well, motion that we have the hearing at this meeting and deny the request for a and deny a request for a okay, okay. okay okay is there a discussion? I think we discuss it. We're hearing that and all this in favor. All right, all this. Way. Okay, we will proceed with the hearing. Thank you very much, everyone. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Would it be appropriate to take a break to allow? Any council member who hasn't yet had the opportunity to read the these comments to read. I would welcome to that. Read those great. comments and I could give a copy to the applicant. Yes, as well. Yeah. Uh, would someone like to make a motion and we adjourn? Motion to adjourn two times for 15, 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 until 8 30. Until 8 30. Okay, is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. And can you send the one to the printer? Yeah. So if, if you all need your privacy to read, you can use offices here. What about our, our admins? Have they seen it? Yeah, yeah I'm printing off a copy and Ron is going to grab it for them. Yeah, is it, it, it doesn't look good. You can fucking copy it. That should be easier for me. Thank you. Is it a great time? Yeah, I mean, there's also the pictures. Sorry. Do you know, do you know who they show? It, it's on the recent in the Oh, really? No, I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine. Um, you know. I don't know, like, um, Matt, what you think about the place, but we're getting some. Like, it would be for me. I can search because I don't know what houses are going to be on there and not on there, and then people get bored of it, and then they start, you know, listserv. We try. What I'll do. Yeah. What I'll start doing now is just yeah, you know, I'll see yeah. the new. I'll see the well, entire council from the tree. Also, it's important to know that the people with that inbox is in a minute in time. Uh, well, I, I mentioned that, that I, I think eventually that would be useful to have a, a drone. You can yes. log in time, but in Saturday. at least in the meantime. Yeah, just like I, you know, I like just like send you the draft that, that I sent to that, that, that so that you know that there, you, that's the next week. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. It was or even from the neighbors to like right. you know that right. aren't maybe a rich like affected by it, but yeah. live on the street or you know that if they know it's coming up, like if we know, because it's they have to submit by the fifteenth. If we know, 
you know, it would be good to get like a preliminary agenda for the meeting so that meetings can start to know. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's what two is going to do. Together. You know, I was very happy to get this to you. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to do I'll just get off, I guess. Mm -hmm. You that? Yes. Yeah. 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 I just want to make sure you saw it as well. That's what um she heard it so was that she might have got to prop the bathroom door I'm headed that way. Well, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, just because I included oh, okay. they, they, oh, they, they emailed oh, it to me, so I just wanted to make sure that thank you. if they reference the picture. Oh, okay. That's it. If you want to see any of them, I can uh, have you share. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, yeah. 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 You're like, hey, you don't come to my world every every month. Thank you, where you have to like make decisions. <laughs> Oh, well, no, no, I'm not going to make up my mind. Right? I'm just saying that's where I'm leaving right now. No, I know. I know. I know. It's a good one. It's a good and so, yeah, and so then, so then I'm like, okay, well, I'll just go with that. Even though I know it doesn't matter, but I hey, think Matt, I'm just going to go. Yes, as, as Dr. Sanders, you know, yeah, I believe, yes, I believe I saw it. Yeah, I think I, I shared, I shared. In the Arboros as well? What was that? In the, the city Arboros, town Arboros? Um, yeah. Somebody he's referring to trees and building codes. Yeah. Which, which, yeah, I, I assume Doug and the Arbor's can answer. Yeah. Right, yes, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's great. I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Thank you, Rosa. No, I I don't know. Right? I think I don't know what I I do we want to put it on the Side, you know, or on the street, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. Didn't they do it like some other time? Didn't we used to have it done? Maybe Steve, Steve, were you there when uh, the painting on the curves was done for the, uh, you know, the house numbers? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Okay. Also, when I think the other thing is that who I was talking to, that they were saying they were they were doing they were looking to be doing in the corner of drivers too. But yeah. then I think the the people wherever that was, but like now we don't want to come out of the right way. Yeah. So no, sorry, I just I think you're right. I think maybe there's only one or two of us moving here. You know, painting the numbers. I remember the contractor like coming to us and say, "Well, you can also paint like stripes on your steps in your walkway, so it'll be more visible." And I'm just being extra huge to me. Oh, because you have to pay for the whole thing anyway, right? No, no, no. The town paid for the numbers. Oh. But then the contractor said, "Well, we're, we're here painting the numbers if you want us to." Oh yeah, yeah. Your steps. Mm, okay. So, no, I just kind of vague reflection. Okay. I mean, the other thing I came in, I was thinking about is it's part of the contract. It's usually in the class. It's not even like the regions of art. I mean, both the stencil, which I have. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just not done with the contracts, but I think that might be an option to it. But I haven't talked to them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think all it is, I think Chevy Chase. You is the other town. Like, Where is that? They're like by Kensington. Yeah, they're, okay. they're kind of way up town. Those mm -hmm. are too close to the mm -hmm. and so and I think what they do is just they're on a three year cycle, mm -hmm. so whatever you know, they do a third of the town every uh -huh. year, but they have a company that has the number sent. Like, yeah, something. so uh, that would be interesting if you could just like find out how much they pay. Or yeah, something. yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to be starting in five minutes.
Beer. Do your kids have braces or anything? I'm sorry. Do your kids have braces or like optometry? Dave, my daughter just went through braces. Do you, do you know her or Uh, Not off the top of my head, but okay. very good. I'm I'm it's misery. Misery. Right up across from sex. Okay. I yeah, he's got a terrible name, Elias Misery. That's an awful name for a dentist. It's an awful name, but he's one of the best That's doctors the I've ever dealt with. I, I don't know. It's, it's failing me right now, but I can. Dr. Gerlane? No. What dentist you There's a doctor. Dr. Gerlane, I think a lot of people use Dr. Gerlane. Did you bring it? Because they are token. Sorry, I missed it. Sorry. Yes, thanks, Dr. Bruno. Yes, Dr. Bruno. Dr. Bruno is so great. Fantastic. Oh, I've heard of her. Very, very good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Very good. My second quote was 30% more than the first quote. I guess she wasn't cheap, but I, yeah, I don't know how she is. It was excellent. Yeah, I go to I go to Wu Wang and Paul in Kensington. I don't know if you. It's or I need orthodontists. Are they orthodontists? They yeah, they're orthodontists as well. They did in they did in this line. Claire's got some. That's not tea. Oh yeah, pull out the. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm calling, uh, I'm reconvening the meeting. And I do think it would be appropriate if uh, a town manager, in case somebody new zoomed in to. Yeah, we do. We, play. we do have a few uh, folks that have joined on. So we're uh, we are about twenty five minutes behind. If you're following along with the um, with the agenda right now, we the council was just on a brief uh, recess to consider uh, an email that had come in. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're considering the uh, application that was submitted by Rockledge Capital LLC uh, for the demolition of a first floor sunroom and the construction of a second story addition for the property located at 4806 Grantham Street. For anybody that has joined us, uh, if at some point you wish to make a comment, um, feel free to use the raise hand function or send me uh, a direct message in the chat. I just ask that you state your name and uh, if you're a town resident, uh, your street, uh, your street for the record. Um, do speak one at a time, please, um, and uh, wait until it's indicated that uh, you, you're in the clear to speak. Um, and uh, just a reminder, if we do get interrupted in some way that doesn't allow us to carry on, uh, we'll we'll end the meeting on Zoom. I'll send out a new link uh, to folks 
via the town email blast and we'll pick up where we left off so we can um, finish with the rest of the business. Um, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So we will proceed. Today is May 1st, 2023. This is a hearing before the Town of Somerset Council for application 23512 to consider a building permit application for the property located at 4806 Grantham Avenue, submitted by Rockledge Capital LLC. This hearing is being audio recorded. We ask that all speakers speak one at a time, addressing the council when called upon, and to state their name and address for the record before making public comment. The hearing will observe the following order. First, the Somerset Town staff will present their findings and submit for the record a report on the application under consideration. Next, the applicant will present their application. Next, the Somerset Town Council will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff relevant to the application at hand. Following that, other interested parties will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or present comments to the council. After that, the applicant will have the opportunity for rebuttal testimony, after which the public comment period of the hearing shall be completed and the record closed. Finally, the council will deliberate and discuss among themselves the merits of the case, the findings of fact, and conclusions. The council may make a motion on a permit decision. The town attorney may be asked to write a decision, and the town manager will be asked to issue a permit with the conditions voted on by the council and enumerated in the town attorney's decision. We now begin this hearing with the presentation of the Somerset staff findings and reports. Mr. Town Manager. And I'm just going to turn it over to our building administrator, Doug Lohmeyer, and after him, uh, the town arborist, Dr. Toller Feather. The established building line, oh, excuse me, the property owners have submitted an application to make several improvements to the existing house at 4806 Grantham Avenue. The EBL analysis indicates the established building line along Grantham is 33 feet back from the front property line. The application also includes 122 square foot addition at the left rear behind the carport and a second story addition to the house. According to the plan, the existing carport and driveway will remain and interior improvements are also proposed. The building setbacks are the existing and proposed front wall will be 33.4 feet from the front property line. Proposed addition on the left side will be 10.3 feet from the left side property line. The existing and proposed right wall will be 8 feet from the right property line. And the existing and proposed rear setback will be 20.9 feet. All proposed setbacks comply with the town code. A 2.5 foot overhang is proposed above the front porch. The code allows a roof overhang to project a maximum of 2.5 feet in the established building line. The overhang must be at least 30.8 feet from the front property line. According to the site plan, the overhang will be 30.9 feet from the front property line, which complies with the code. Proposed building height will be 26.3 feet, and the lot coverage will be 29%. Two new HVAC units will be installed at the rear of the house in accordance with the code. The application included a parking plan, which indicated three vehicles will be poked, uh, parked along Grantham. And Montgomery County did not require a settlement control plan, stormwater management plan, or drainage area because of the uh, small amount of this land disturbance. A dump center temporary, temporary toilet will be located on the existing driveway and then they're shown on the plan. I recommend the council approve the demolition permit, the building permit, two HVAC units, the dumpster permit. And I also recommend that the town not issue the building permit until the applicant provides the town with copies of the county permits. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Is that the... Uh... Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Feather is also with us. Um, the uh, the um, the tree. There's one tree removal of an eight-inch uh, holly that's in the footprint. The holly's in poor condition anyway, um, and um, 
We've asked for a six to eight foot evergreen be planted as a reforestation plan. And um, the tree protection plan protects the tree in the front and there's a tree on the side of the addition on the, on the uh, next to the property line that has tree protection. And I, uh, I feel that this protection will uh, protect the tree from the construction activity. And that's, uh, that's all I have to, to report. Okay, thank you. We will now have the applicants opening statement and presentation of their application. Come forward, thank you very much, sir. Hi, George Myers again. Um, I am glad to hear that Doug and Dr. Feather agree that our plans meet the town code. Um, that, um, going into detail and trying to address the neighbor's concern, I just would like to point out that our firm has probably done, I think, upwards of 20 projects in the neighborhood, new housing and renovations. We respect the town code, we always follow it. It seems as though the neighbor doesn't believe our plans for some reason. Points out things on our plans that he says he doesn't seem to believe that we're going to be able to build it according to the plans. And that is, we've always done that, and we always will. And we respect the code, and we never had a problem like this on any other project. But I'm here to answer questions. Um, thank, thank you so very much, sir. Council President Serka, do you have any questions? Um, I had one question, I believe that's related to drawing D100. Mm -hmm. The we have questions, but um, the the demolition phase of this project. Okay. What portion, if any, of the front of the house is being affected by the demolition? I it, in the what point was the front. Are you referring to the cardboard? No, no, the the house itself. It, it looked like the dash lines. Showing the demolition that the the angle lines for some of the, the some of the front wall there are some solid walls that are becoming windows and vice versa so there's modifications to the front wall which will require some demolition demolition and reconstruction of the front wall okay um, but the wall itself stays in the exact same place okay thank you I, I don't have any other questions thank you councilor Barr do you have any questions. The Levine letter makes some claims about how rainwater will run off the roof onto the carport. Um, I didn't see anything like that in your plans. Could you maybe describe how you're handling the rainwater from your roof for us? Well, there's, there's, there's a second story obviously being added to the home, but it's the same square footage of roof. It's just, right. being, it's just being raised, and, and the way the water is draining currently is the way it will continue to drain. So there's no change in the drainage now. No. And Thank there, you. There's no drainage plan required by the county because it's such a small disturbance. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Howell. Do you have any questions? Um, I'm glad you could bring this into code. That makes our life easier. Yeah. Um, but I, I have a question about the driveway. Are you redoing the driveway? No, we're not redoing the driveway. Okay. No. It, I mean, if it's not managed, managed to, there's but no reason to. It's a concrete okay. drive. Okay. No, I was just wondering if you, were, if you were redoing it, could you redo it in permeable, you know, um, you know pavers to really help uh, any water run on? That's all. That's, that's uh, all. Yeah, I can't really hit the plan for to leave the driveway. Okay. We don't have, uh, again, the disturbance on the property doesn't require any stormwater management because of the, the ratios that are on the lot. I, I suppose it's something we could consider. Well, I just I guess what I'm asking is that if you ended up having to do it for whatever reason, things got messed up on the driveway, the equipment you brought in, whatever, I would I would really appreciate you doing something like that, even though the plans don't call for you to do more stormwater management. In this swamp of a neighborhood, we need all the stormwater management we can get. So that's I just want to throw that in there. Okay. Sir, did you want to um put your comment on the record? I'm, I'm a, my name is Stephen Smith. I'm a construction consultant for Don and Jim, so I can kind of answer any construction questions. So did, did you really get budget consideration? Right. I mean, there's a construction budget, and there's no, at this point, no reason to replace the driveway. If it does become damaged, that might become a different issue, but we're trying real hard to not. Right. I get it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. That was okay, thank you. Councilor Kumar. 
I have some questions about informed by the neighbors. Sure. So one question is, could you, and feel free to spend no details. Okay. I want details for the record. Okay. What are you planning to do with the existing carport? Spare no details. We are, the, the carport is going to stay where it is. We're going to have to do some structural stuff within the carport. Where does that mean? The fourth to second floor. What does that mean? It might, it, can you hold on one second? Yeah. Because I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm filling in. I know we're moving a, but we are moving a post from okay. there. Take your time. And installing a new Take your time. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that right, Dave? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a new beam being installed and, and another tunnel, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, and then that's all being done. Where, which side of the behind the front wall of the house, not even close to the front setback. Okay, and, and you're doing that. I, I did read. I did read in there where he, he the neighbor seems to think that we're going to remove the carport and rebuild it, which is not the case. And his contention was, if we removed removed it, then it wouldn't be there, and therefore we couldn't put it back because it would be on the front setback. But we are not removing the carport. But you are adding a pillar in the back wall. To correct. The front so, wall. We're, we're putting a beam up. Get rid of the tunnel and make it easier to park. Okay. That was one question. Um, the other question I have is Have you omitted any trees from your drawings? Uh, no, not. I have. I am unaware of that. You're unaware of that. I'm okay. unaware of any trees that exist that we do not have on our plan. That you have not accurately described on the plan yes. that you submitted. Dr. Feather, is your view that all the trees? That need to be described in the plan submitted to the town have been described in the plan submitted to the town. Yes. Okay. Third question. There is apparently a tree. There are two trees. Okay, I'm going to read this out because I, I, I'm not a lawyer and never was a lawyer. I don't intend to be a lawyer. <laughs> and at this stage of reading this, I'm not sure. Please put that on the line. Please put that on the record. <laughs> Further, with respect to trees, there are two trees close to and within the 122 square feet proposed addition. In case you didn't know that, you are doing 122 square feet proposed addition. It shows up multiple times. Only one of which is identified in the drawings. The one that is identified is labored, labeled injured beyond restoration. In fact, there is another tree, unidentified, right next to it. Both of those trees were so-called injured by the prior owner who without a permit and in violation of the town code sawed off all of their limbs because he wanted to build his renovation where the trees were located. I believe the implication of this and the following sentences is that it's questioning whether those trees are indeed injured and unhealthy. So maybe this is a question for the town arborists. Yeah. Are those trees that they are mentioning there indeed injured and unhealthy? I'm sorry, I cannot tell you which trees because I really... I think there are badly ones down here. I think it's... Uh... Dr. Yeah, Dr. Brad, did you hear the question? Talk about you're, you're, you're muted, Tolbert, as well, just FYI. Okay. Can can people see the screen or no? Yes, yeah, we yes. Can. Okay. Yes. I think the tree he's talking about is number four. Okay. Uh, that was mutilated because it was mutilated. Okay. Uh, and then I think the other tree he's talking about is three. Three's the one he's concerned about the most. So I I I I, I you know, four is the one they're gonna remove because it's in very poor condition. And it's also right on the, you know, the footprint of the addition. So- So you confirm that those trees, two trees are indeed, whatever the origins of those injuries are indeed injured. I, I don't know. I mean, I assume what he's saying could be true. I, I mean, I can't tell. I just know that four, doesn't have any limbs on it. It's in very poor. Well, you can see the picture down here. That's what it looks like. So all see, right. it, it's been pruned. See all the, the stubs here? Okay. 
appreciate that. I think you answered my question. I have a, a related question here. There is a holly, which is next to the 120 square, 120 square foot addition, once again, is to remain. This three, you regard yeah. that as essential. So yeah. I think what they are saying is they would not want you to cut down that tree. Yes, right. and, they're not, and, they're not. and just to confirm for the record, will you be cutting down the set tree? No. Okay. Thank you. Those are all the questions. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Rova. Um, and so for that that tree, you know, they're implying in their email that that tree is um is going to be damaged by the roots. Do you think that that's true, Dr. Feather? That 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 tree will make it through construction? Um, yes, I let me go to this one. Hold on. Okay, this is the tree protection plan. And um, can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a tree in question here. Um, and um, and I've looked at the site many, several times. Uh, and as you know, roots, the roots go out on in both directions. And a, a tree, a tree is a trees are survivors. So you can um, encroach slightly on one side like this and the tree will be fine. As far as the uh, trimming the canopy, um, I don't think the canopy encroaches that much onto the new building. There might be some tips that have to be pruned off, but I don't think it's gonna have to, this tree will have to be pruned drastically. If you want, you can add in the permit or in the uh, building permit, that um, before any pruning, that the arborist will go and consult with the uh, with the owner, or the owner's representatives about about the pruning for clearance for either constructing or the final uh, building itself. Okay, and then um, and so just to reiterate, the new building plans that you guys have do not require any variances. Okay. No. Okay. Great. Thanks. Is that is that your last question? Yeah. Uh, council, do do I need to run through the council? Do you have further questions? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run through the council. Yeah. Council President Circa, do you have further questions? Just talking about code. I know it on on the drawing, which is the sheet number zero zero four, the site plan, so it shows the before and after. It has some three photos. When you talk about the calculations, you indicate um, no drainage plans requires the addition does not increase the building lot coverage by more than 400 square feet. It does not involve more than 100 cubic yards per movement. But it's my understanding, if my recollection is correct, that with the town's, the town's code that was implemented within the last six months, um, if you're over 150 square feet, you have to, so you're still within that, but it's it's getting very close, which I think is what my colleague, Council Member Heller, is, is getting at. That, that for our town with our stormwater conditions, this it, it, it might not sound like much, 122 square feet, but that's that it in fact close to our limit. And is is that correct, Robin? 150 square feet is our limit. This is within our limit. It's, it's within the limit. So, I'm sorry, Do you want to understand exactly your point? Yeah. Well, my point is that I heard the applicant describe how they comply with all codes, and their reference in their drawing was was referencing the county code, not the town code. But you know, it comply with the town code, and it does in fact town. But, but what's written down is well, we could. Uh, that, 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 that's kind of, right. I get it. I'm going to add that. Now I'm drawing. And, and you don't need that. I, I wasn't sure for your information. That is the town. The town has a stricter right. requirement. Yeah, we'll be a okay. Um, and then I have I have a question for Doug. I don't know if this is a time or separate. No, it's a technical question you can ask. Okay. Um, Doug, I'm trying to understand the infill 
calculations or in, whether it's infill development requirements. And um, I reached out to Bob Kelly at DPS. Are you familiar with Bob Kelly? I've heard of him, I've never met him, yes. Uh, he was the individual I've been referenced to speak to. I've, I've spoken to him about the earlier application here back in November, and I spoke to him just earlier today. Who is he again, I'm sorry? So he is a inspector, Department of Public Permitting Services from Montgomery County. At the county level. The county level, okay. Um, this because I had questions about the you know, depending on how much demolition and how much new build and what, how, how do you go through that? So I was just well, trying to understand there's it. There's a right. note on the cut. I could read you the exact requirement on the cover sheet here if you like. Right. So I read that, but according to Mr. Kelly, and I and I read it to him verbatim, and he read back to me, he said that in addition to those number of calculations or separate from those number of calculations, the front public facing of the house, the front of that, the front wall, front public facing wall of the house must be retained intact, cannot be demolished. If, if any any portion of that wall is demolished, you now go into the infill development calculation. And, and so this is for, for Doug. Um, I mean, that doesn't change variance issues or anything for the house the, the house would still meet all of other needs but that would trigger our stormwater management requirements well i think it's a little bit of a gray area there because we are making changes to the front wall of the house you know maybe putting a window where there's a wall and vice versa the wall itself from itself remains because the county you know, the county has approved this from a zoning point of view and that's when they that's when it's they term. have already approved they've approved it, which means they've confirmed that it's not in court. So in this case, it's not in court according to the county, and that's on the county website now, that it's only approval has been done. Okay. And so I mean, well, if that's available, they haven't finished the rest of the permit, but that has been done. I, I will need an explanation. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on, you're going to um, have okay. Mr. Lamar answer that question for the record. Yes. But, but, but thank you for that sure. additional feedback. And I did not understand that you'd already had the county approval of that just on the zoning portion of it, yeah. Um, Doug, do you have any comments or thoughts to share on the subject? Uh, no, I agree with his assessment. Uh, but first of all, the, bill, the town does not have in its code a section on lot building coverage. We rely on Montgomery County to make that determination. And after looking at the county's infill current regulations today, what this gentleman told you about the front wall remaining is not in their code today. It's something that they are planning on adding in the future. But as of today, that's not part of the code. And as the architect just mentioned, they're not revising the front wall. So I agree with the county's assessment that it's not an infill project. Okay, okay. thank you, Doug. Um, sorry, I'm so trying we to work are, on we'll, the we'll order. Have, we'll come back if you have other questions. Because we think I'm all done for now. Okay, thank you. Councilor Vaughn, I have no further questions. Thank you, Councilor Heller. I just wonder if we are worried about future um, stormwater problems here because they are having. Okay, so your question is to. Uh, I don't know. It's to, I think maybe to Doug. Okay. Or to Doug, the attorney. Okay, Doug, do you think that there's future problems of stormwater management? Because of this addition? No, uh, because it's not, in, except for that 120 square foot addition at the left rear behind the garage, it's not increasing the building footprint. And the site plan also indicates the downspout locations and the flow of the runoff, and all of it's running over grassed areas, either to the rear or out to the street. So I don't. Uh, foresee any runoff issues okay, related to the roof. 
Thank you. Thank you. Is it? <laughs> Councillor Ackerman. No question. Thank you, Councillor Ackerman. And so as part of this, are you guys, um, I don't know if it's in the plans or not, are you guys going to be doing like more like a bigger patio or different, um, more impermeable surfaces yeah, on the lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, because, um, you know, this, they don't do a sediment review plan for these, you know, additions. They just do it for, for Montgomery County. So, so did you have any? No. Okay. okay. Third round, do you have any? Did you have any final question? I have a question for but I think we can get to that. We're in our deliberations. Okay. Councilman Barr, do you have any further questions? Nope. Councilman Ray Howell. No. Councilman, no. Councilman. No. Okay. Thank you. So I think we now open the floor for public comment. Is anyone? I don't think there are any other public comments. Uh, I do see Mr. Kana here. Um, I know that he's the rear neighbor, um, but I don't believe there are any comments at this point. And then just okay. referencing again the the comments that were submitted by the Levine have been entered into the record. Okay, thank you. So uh, I wanted to ask the town attorney because I wanted to dot off the eyes and cross the T's. So. Do I need to give the applicant uh, the opportunity to present any kind of rebuttal testimony? Mr. Mayor, the only thing that would be rebuttable would be the evidence from Mr. Kelly, but Mr. Myers had an opportunity to respond to that already. So that's okay. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so this now concludes the public portion of the hearing. The record is now closed, and now we'll turn it over to the council president to discuss and deliberate the findings of fact and conclusions of law, and then they will make the decision. Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is an interesting project. We've gone through it as, as it has evolved uh, over time. I appreciate the applicant's efforts to address previous concerns, the various and size uh, issues. Um, my thoughts to share. Um, even though the, the building does not require any variances, I'm concerned about stormwater management. And unlike some of the even larger, more substantial projects um, we've had where they did go past the trade once they had put in. So at the end of the day, we had projects, we have other home projects that improved or reduced the stormwater issue within the town. This project, as stated, is going to make things worse. How much worse? I don't know. It's going to make things a little worse. So, the question I had to run before we got going is um, as the town considers those more visionary objectives of you know, enjoyment of neighbors and property, could we interpret that to include stormwater? And could we, for example, uh, take up Council Member Heller's suggestion of the driver to say we would approve this permit with the condition that they put in a permit to drive or conduct or something. Would that be acceptable? They're not redoing the driveway. They're not redoing the driveway, but they're adding oh, in, but, 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 yeah, but they're adding impermeable surface that's going to make stormwater condition worse. I, I'm just asking it is the thing about the Let's let it's going to answer the question for you. Well, I mean, the, the council can impose conditions when granting a building permit. The conditions should be related to mitigation of impacts that are permissibly addressed by the council in a building permit review. And I have given the council legal advice with respect to the code provisions, and I'm wouldn't want to put that legal advice on the record. We could go into closed session, it would be helpful. I mean, it, all, it might also be helpful to ask the applicants if it's something they'd, they'd be willing to consider. Okay. Thank you. But to do that, we have to, we have to make a motion. Yes, it'd be free on the record. Okay, so back, so those my back to you. Um, that, that's it for my introduction. Robin, what are your thoughts? Right, uh, I mean, we, we 
spent a lot of time writing our, our code to cover stormwater issues and we settled on the 150 square foot standard as reasonable in the sense that um, it is a small percentage of the total impervious surface below that 150 square feet given the overall size of a residence. And that's why we went that way. So um, I, th I think they are complying with the code. I, I think the Levine's concerns have been addressed in the meeting. Um, so I'm ready to approve this application. Okay. No more questions. Okay. Comments? Well, I think if we, you know, arbitrarily set standards for our application, again, they're very dangerous territory. We worked hard to update the code. We can further update the code. But if we start sort of imposing perspectives that are not consistent with the code, I think that opens up to a lot of challenge and creates further challenges for us as a council. So I'm, I'm comfortable. Okay. The fact that this is within the code, we, we took the time to incorporate and systematically address the one neighbor's concerns as best as we could. And so I, I don't feel that I've heard anything compelling that wouldn't want us to move forward with this. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, like, because, you know, we're trying to make it better, you know, and so, you know, it, every little bit kind of helps, I think, with stormwater management. But, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, if we, but in the way that the code's written now, it's 150, which they're not doing. So, um, you know, maybe it's something that we want to look at um, for future. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm, this is an evolutionary right. process as we learn lessons. Okay. Um, so, you prepared to make a motion? Yeah, yeah, I like, um, um, that we approve the building permit application submitted by Rocket Capital for the demolition of the first floor sunroom construction of 122 square foot second story addition for the property at 4806 Grantham Avenue with the condition that the owners consult our arborist if they are considering pruning the uh, tree, a tree identified as number three, uh, which is the holly tree um, in the property. Second. Wait. Okay. Is it, let me just so, ask: Is that legally and technically published? This should be no. It is, Mr. Mayor. But I might also recommend that the conditions also include those recommended by the arborist and the building permit administrator in their respective reports. That the building permit issued by the town would not be delivered to the applicant right. until the county permits are issued, and that I think that's not one food, isn't it? It is in a code, but you can but he wants it in so effective. So do you do you accept that? Yes, I can cut that. Okay, and you and that one that's okay. okay. And that one reforestation tree be planted and that the tree protection plan as recommended by the town arbors be okay with it. Is, see, yeah, I was gonna say that the Montgomery County building permit had been approved. Okay, is there further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all this is there. I always want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and taking time to answer our questions. Okay, the next item is the building administrator's report. Mr. Lohmeyer. A couple things to go over this evening. At 4719 Cumberland Avenue, uh, the applicant submitted a plan to remove the deck at the rear of the house and replace it with a new deck. HPC has approved the new deck, but we're still waiting for county approval. Uh, tonight, you uh, approve the extension for 4900 Cumberland Avenue until August 15th. At 4715 Essex, uh, that building permit will be expiring in uh, July, and they propose to be completed by then, so they will not need a building permit extension. At 5502 Greystone, the same there, uh, their project permit expires July 1st, and the contractor says they will be completed by then, so no extension is needed. At 5510 Greystone, their permit expires on June 18th. Uh, I've contacted them, and uh, their permit will not need to be extended also. 
5506 Trent, their permit expires on May 17th and the contractor says he will be done. And at 5522 Uppingham, the town permit will expire in July. I've contacted the contractor, I have not heard back from them yet. So that permit is might still be needed to be extended. They're still working on the project. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Council President Serka, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you, Doug. Councilor Ball. I'm only going to point out that uh, 5529 Surrey uh, now has a for sale sign on it. So it appears to be um, oh. that the builder who bought it is now selling it without doing anything to it. I was wondering so about that. One of one. So, is that your only? That's my only. Thank you. Can't remember how that looks. No, I, I was worried. I wondered about that property. Does just because there's a realtor sign on it, does that mean that the the developer is self not uh, part uh, of the project? Yes, no. Doug, no, it doesn't. Yes, so. I, I I contacted uh, Paramount, which is the owner, and he says they will be tearing the house down and replacing it with a new house. And I advised him that since the last time they built a house in the town, our code has changed and they need to review it. And yeah. I recommended that they meet with us before they applied to the county. As of today, they had not applied to the county or to the town. You might want to check with them to see if they are selling the property because there was an earlier sign that new home was being developed there. That sign has gone and now a for sale sign has appeared. Okay, well, you also well, Paramount. Uh, you, yeah. yeah, I you, mean, you are, okay. This is we don't want to be here all night. Yes, Henry Bar, if you have any questions about that, call them directly. Do you have any further questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Yeah, so member, uh, no questions, but thank, thank you to the town staff for that's great to uh, improve how this information is presented. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor. No questions. Thank you. The next item public hearing motion to consider approval of the spring tree planting list. Is recommended by the town arborist. The following: Can we just say approve? <laughs> no, no, no. The arborist is proposing following trees: two at forty-five ten Cumberland, two at forty-eight twelve Essex, two at four hundred Falstone, fifty-five oh five Grayson, fifty-four oh four Surrey, fifty-six oh four Warwick Place. Doctor Feather. Uh, nine trees in total. Um, the uh, PNRC has looked this over and um, made comments and um, I got a uh, pricing from Stadler, the contract we use, the cost is $3,710. Thank you. Council, President Circuit. No questions. Councilor Barr. No questions. Councilor Heller. I just have a quick question for Dr. Feather. The residents at 48, 01 Fallstone, better known as my next door neighbors, have asked me about a tree being planted in there. They said you said there'd be a tree planted in there, and I guess they had a dead tree. They did have a dead tree. Um, um, and I, 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 should I, you know, was that on your list? It wasn't. Uh, was that from last year or where, where is 4801 Fallstone? It was in the fall. I think the tree was taken down. She was just wondering, would there be a new, when do they get on the list for a new tree? Okay, let me look on the, yes, I, um, I and the committee wanted to plant a, um, a canopy tree between 4801 and 4803. And they wanted a cherry tree, so I just um, um, I decided to defer on that until we a cherry tree with what was there, which is why that's what they want. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but there's space there for a canopy tree because the wires are on the other side. Um, so I can relook at that again in the fall. Okay, and there are wires right there. They were always caught up in that cherry tree. 
So there are wires. Well, I think there's um, service wires, which you can place the tree where it won't be in the service wires. All right, I just want to register their concern. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you, Council Member Dr. Feather, you know the question I'm going to ask. Have you consulted with the residents at these addresses? Yes, everybody, everyone has been consulted with and, um, and has green lighted these plantings. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Rayback. I have no questions. Um, Mr. Town Manager, has any resident or guests indicated they wish to? Uh, no, not at this time. Thank you, Councilor. I'm ready to make a motion. I move that we approve the spring tree planting list as recommended by the town arborist with the nine trees as listed. Second. Is there, thank you. Is there, set? Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, I'm going to Thank you. Next yeah. item. Thank you. Uh, the next item. To consider approval of the removal of the following town trees at the recommendation of the town arborist. One at 5524 Warwick and one at 5601 Warwick, Dr. Feather. Um, both of these are pin oaks. They're, um, I, these are always hard for me to do. They, you could, you could prune them and they would, I mean, they would look distorted, horrible. They're half of the canopy's gone. Um, and I, I think it just makes more sense to take them down. They're, they're not going to revive and, um, and replace them with uh, a new tree. So we'll probably take these down this uh, early, late spring, or early summer, and then replace in the fall on both trees, 5524 Warwick and um, 5601 Warwick. Okay, thank you. Council, President Sergio, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Council Member Barr. Uh, no questions. Council Member Hill. No questions. Council Member Kumar. No. Council Member Rabbi. No. Is any? No. Thank you, Council. I agree with the motion. Will we approve the move of the fall of the two town trees as listed? So there a second. I agree. Council Member Kumar. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor. Uh, all those opposed. Thank you. Next thank item. You. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Feather. Yep, thank Next you. Next item, public hearing motion to consider the adoption of an ordinance adopting the FY24 budget and tax rate. Council, Mr. Town Manager. Uh, not much more to introduce. I think we've discussed this. Uh, the council is as familiar with this as I am at this point, um, but happy to you know engage in any further discussion on it. I, uh, yeah. That is it. Is the budget. We, uh, yes, we do. We have our esteemed uh, is budget is the chair. chair, as is well chair. as uh, at least one of our uh, committee does, members. Does, Mr. Does, Madam Chair, do you wish to make any comments at this time? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Time. Mayor. Um, I have no comments at this time. Thank you so much. And again, for all of your hard work and your committee. Council President Serco, do you have any questions? No questions. Council Member Barr. Um, no questions. I'll only comment that this is a very conservative forecast for FY24. Um, and I fully expect that we will see substantially more revenue coming to that point in the forecast. Which we're all praying for. Thank you, Council Member Heller. No questions. And thanks, Anne, to you and your committee. Great job. Yes. Council Member Kumar. Uh, no questions for me. Thank you. Thank you for that. I have one question about um the painting of the street side street on the curb numbers on the curbs. So um my understanding is that it was you know it, well I know it was in the budget for this fiscal year, and we haven't done anything with it yet, and so it's removed from the budget for fiscal year 2024. And so I guess my question is, is if we haven't done anything on it and it doesn't get done, Big question. would we just move it through over? Our budget is, is annual. So that was why, for example, we did with the electric truck. And actually that reminds me that we, we might want to uh, also consider 
Uh, actually, never mind. We already we already took care of that. Yeah. So, so, but but to answer your question, I'm sorry. Uh, if, if we want it, if we want to make sure it's in the budget, if it doesn't get completed by July 1st, it's not budgeted next year. So you might want to add that. And so, yeah, I mean, we don't know yet if we are going. You know, we have to we, vote on it as a group. So, so you might want to. You might. I suggest you, and then I suggest when the budget's considered, then you present an amendment. Or you, we can amend it in the new fiscal year, like we did for the truck. That's what right. Matt would just say. Small amount. We, we amended the budget. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. The questions me. All right. Which of the staff? All right. So uh, at the appropriate time, you can amend. You can amend the budget for next year. And then when you discuss once it's a, but okay, thank you. Do you, do you have any further questions? No, but I would like to amend it to for okay, next well, year. So right now we're doing the hearing the questions and then you can okay. okay. I, so now our council, Mr. Town Manager, has any resident guests who wish they uh no, 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 uh no further comments. Okay, thank you. Now can are you ready to make a motion? Can I ask one more question? Um do we know, are there other things that haven't been completed in fiscal year 23 that have been removed from 2024? Yes. What uh, are the... For example, uh, the... Well, one, one example is the um, the the, par the parks plan, uh -huh. um, but the Parks and Natural Resources Committee uh, uh, requested that for the next fiscal year. Um, so that's moved along. So that's moving along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Councilor, try to make a motion. I am prepared to make a motion. Thank you. I just briefly, before I do that, I want to thank the Council for the multiple sessions we had to remain budget in detail over a two month period involving multiple individuals, including the full budget committee. Um, as you all remember, we went through at least two sessions and had detailed access to all line items in the budget over the last two months. So I'm grateful for all of you for focusing on that and bringing all your questions at the appropriate time in the budget process. So I'm moving to consider the adoption of an ordinance adopting the fiscal year 24 budget and tax rate um, with the following amend amendment. Consistent with the outcome of the council's closed session, Line item 61202 is changed to $135,000. And line item 61200 is changed to $375,472. What are those line items? Okay. okay, is there a second on the salary? Is there a second on the motion? Matt's oh, okay. the fourth. Is there a second on the motion? Second on the okay. second. Okay. So now I think that um, there might be another amendment to the. So there's a motion on the floor. Did you wish to make an amendment? Yeah, I would like to make a motion to amend to include the rollover of the fiscal year 2023 $5,000 for the potential to paint um, numbers. Okay, well, I think what you need to do is get the line item and the number as your motion. Why not? I guess why not doesn't exist in 24. Well, no, no. Um, let's see. So I would, I think probably would just put it under, um, uh, well, one, one option is to uh, put it under. Line item. We could do it under line item six eight one hundred streets sidewalks and um, street sidewalks stormwater, and we could create a sub. Uh, a so sub that's up to the maker. Sub one. Is that what you want to put? So that, yeah, street or safety. That's the, the hot. Okay, so okay, so please say the number so she can say and then what what numbers are going to be next? That's, that's the end. Oh, I'm sorry. So it would it would go from. Might want a pen or pencil. I guess. <laughs> it's a uh, line item six eight one hundred, 
streets, sidewalk, storm water. Currently, it is three. 358,375 dollars and so it would be increasing to three three hundred sixty three thousand three hundred seventy five dollars so it wasn't a separate item um it's rolled into that item. I, I think the easiest way would to just okay. roll it so into that higher it, level is that what you want to make this unless you wanted to create a new line item six eight one oh seven uh street street signage and amend it from zero to five thousand i thought you wanted to just take four okay can we i would like to amend it to go into six eight one oh seven and what's the amount <laughs> zero to five thousand dollars and and what i had said before because it would fall under that umbrella under the okay. street sidewalk yes yep. okay so but you, it, it's own line item. exactly okay so do you want to see you can. Um, I would like to amend the budget to include um, line item 68107 to go from zero to $5,000 for um, street sidewalk numbers. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Okay, so now we're considering Councilmember Kumar's motion as amended. Is there discussion? And I think there was a question. I think you had a question of him about the, uh, the amendments he had in his original motion. Remember, it was answered. Did you, was it answered? You just wanted to, she wanted to know what the numbers referred to. I just wanted did to you get, yeah, did you get, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now is there further motion, further discussion on the motion as amendment? As amendment. I just have one question. Doesn't it, the request should have to contain the tax rate, the number of the tax rate? Yes, yes. but that's in the, in the ordinance, Mr. Mayor. Oh, so, so but it doesn't have to be in the ordinance. Is it, okay, good. Okay, so is there further discussion? Hearing that, all this in favor. All this was great job, everybody. Next item, public hearing motion to consider approval of the 2023 pool rules and fees as recommended by the pool committee. So let me just explain something here. So when we had our um, work session, which um, we kind of rushed through, I failed to, um, closely read the recommendations by the pool committee because there were three recommendations in there that needed to be we moved it so so the um I think only three of you were there but or maybe I don't know. we we moved forward the recommendations from the pool committee there were three items in there that need that need to be uh considered by the council one was um, an item because the pool committee cannot uh, adopt the, the pool rules. The council needs to. So there is a recommendation in that uh, in those minutes about lanes for the um, water aerobics, and there was a second one, right? Okay. Uh, uh, lap swimming. Yeah. No, there was a recommendation about. That's true. That's true. There was a recommendation, and there was also a recommendation in there about a pilot program for stroke for stroke, and and those need to be approved by the council. The the, the committee can uh, adopt them. The Who's our liaison to the pool committee? Me. Okay. Okay. So did you do you, before we take questions? Do you have anything else to add? Um, because what should have happened is the at that works. So, well, well, yeah. The 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 only other exactly. thing in the same vein as the lap swimming and water aerobics is if we wanted to specifically put in about uh, reserving lanes within the pool or so. But I think that was a recommendation. No. It, in any case, what should have happened it didn't happen is. So when the recommendations came to the uh, work session, then the council should have charged the town attorney preparing the language because the pool rules 
have to be approved by the council. And, and the lap lane stuff uh, is a recommendation that has to be in the pool. But, so hold on, you'll be able to ask questions. And then the, the um, whatever that was. I don't know the pilot private. You'll get to ask questions. I'm just saying. But I'm not going to understand you what the state is like. I'm really lost. Well, then you, when you, you can ask the question because we're going to. But we're wasting time. I'm not sure. No, we're not. Yeah. I'm trying to explain. And then the, the um, did you, did you ever read the, the recommendations? Okay. So the other thing is the pilot project has to be approved by the council. Council President Sir, do you have any questions? I don't understand what's changed. I understand what we're approving. Is that all? Is Sorry, that Zeton? I'm just late and I'm tired. Yes. <laughs> is, is that Zeton? Because can I just I am say here. one thing? We, well, he can, the, let's let Matt present it then. Can I just say one thing before we, we get Matt? Hey, Matt. Is that we did break, we talked about this at work session. And then I said then that I think we might be pulling this back because we needed to go back to the committee. So we went back to the committee. Okay, Matt, take it. Okay. Uh, first of all, Matt Zaft, 4820 Dorset Ave. Is, is it okay for me to go forward? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, a, a few things that I'd point out that um, this is the first year that we've actually had to or been told that we need to incorporate the lap lanes into the pool rules. In all prior years, um, lap lane numbers and usage has all been something that has been determined by the pool management committee and then the authority has been given to the town manager to decide that and, and both pre-COVID and during COVID that was all done. We didn't have specific pool rules on this. Nonetheless, we still brought it up in committee as well as there was an article in the town journal that I wrote about it. There's basically three main things on the table. One, in conjunction with Lucy Freeman, the two of us had some great talks and we went through and determined that with water aerobics, what our recommendation to the town manager was that water aerobics be given three lanes by default at all times. Anytime that their numbers increased to 13 to 15, they would be given a fourth lane. Anytime their number increased 16 and above, they'd be given a fifth lane, but at all times, at least one lane would be reserved for lap swimming. Um, we did this purely as a numbers-based math. I like math, where four uh, water aerobics per lane. So that's how we got to those numbers. Lucy was fine with those numbers. And that okay, hold on, hold on a second, Mr. Chair. So uh, we consulted with the town attorney and I'll let him address it, but I believe the town attorney ruled that those, what you're talking about, needs to be in the pool rules or not. Is that is that correct, Mr. Town Attorney? I'm trying to remember exactly the history, Mr. Mayor, but generally speaking, I recall advising that those types of rules should be in the rules formally approved by the council so that they are enforceable. Right, that is why that is why it is before the council tonight. So, so the council can approve this or not, but but the town attorney has advised that if you're going to have a rule like that, it needs to be in the full rules. It needs to be considered by all of you because that's what you have the power to do. That I, I, you know, I don't have a personal opinion on this. I'm just trying to protect the process and your input into the decision. Because that's what you're elected to do. Okay, proceed, Mr. Uh, Chair. Certainly. Um, so that was what was uh, voted on at the pool committee meeting. I'll point out that uh, all members of the committee were present, and it was a unanimous vote in favor of that, um, and included by endorsed by Lucy herself, who was present at the meeting as well. That's water aerobics. Um, the early bird swim we determined that the best way to be as inclusive as possible was to be offer different options where we would designate three lanes that would be for two swimmers only for those who are not comfortable sh doing more than sharing or splitting a lane um, and that there would be three lanes where there would be up to four people allowed to for those that are comfortable doing what we refer to as circle swimming um, Originally, we had thought about doing this as a de designation by days. One of the committee members suggested that as a better way to be more inclusive and to be 
more uh, open to all, regardless of their schedules, that we do three and three. So that was what we adopted. Again, all members were present. It was a unanimous vote in favor where three lanes would be two swimmers per lane. Three lanes would be up to four swimmers per lane on both groups, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Uh, that's the early bird swim portion of it. Um, and then the final portion, um, and I also point out just very quickly, briefly, we had our signups over the weekend. Um, we actually have 32 people that registered for early bird swim, which is a record. Um, and just to give you a sense, the break even point is at 24. So we're pretty good there. Um, the final thing that I believe is on the, the pool rule at, aspect when it comes to lanes is the stroke and technique pilot. Um, this was actually a, an idea. It's interesting. It came from two different people independent uh, in the vein of great minds thinking alike. Both council member Heller uh, and committee member Dennis Horn came up with these ideas themselves. And we, uh, we pushed them forward and a lot of deliberation, a lot of thinking into how they could be implemented. And the idea, again, being, and, and this is one thing Dennis brought up of, you know, we've got these great coaches. Um, wouldn't it be great if everyone in town, like the older residents could get access to them and little things like he was saying how he could improve his stroke just a little with just a little bit of coaching, a little bit of technique here and there. Uh, so I approached the Dolphins head coach, Roger Dent who um, is also a former division one swimmer and uh, actually works full-time teaching and, and, and doing swimming uh, for Tolfson when he's not coaching the dolphins, um, an excellent, excellent stroke technician. And he graciously agreed. He is giving us an incredibly low rate of only $40 an hour because we're doing it in conjunction with the time that he would already be uh, at the pool, he's just going to stay an extra hour after Somerset Dolphins swim practice. So the idea was we would do it two days a week, um, basically when water aerobics was not happening. So it'd be Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1030 to 1130. Um, we had previously put into the budget, which obviously was the last subject, a $2,000 towards the pool summer programming. Um, we unanimously voted again, again, all members present, to allocate 800 of that 2,000 to be used to pay the salary of Roger Dent, the additional hour that he would stay. Um, the, the Basically, this is going to be 10 total session, 10 weeks, I apologize, 10 weeks, two days a week, because we are only doing it when MCPS is not in session. Again, and only when, you know, the two days that water aerobics is not participating Monday through Friday. So it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1030 to 1130, only when MCPS is out of school. Um, and the idea being that, it, you know, we, we make it free and open to all residents, but that they would need to sign up through Member Splash, mainly so that we can track the numbers and, and see if this is something worthwhile to continue in the future. And I guess one last thing, sorry, I paused and then I'm sure you were about no to problem. take your time. Um, we would designate three lap lanes for use or, <clears throat> excuse me, for the stroke and technique. Now, okay, no. thank you. Very, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Council me. President Serpa. Do you have any questions? Well, I'm just, so, so I appreciate all the work that's that's been done here and it sounds like some great ideas, but Am I missing it in the pool rules document that's presented to us? I'm not seeing anything about those labs. Because we didn't write it up as pool rules. We didn't think we had to. Okay. So, so are we being asked to vote on something? And if so, what is it? It just sounds like there's a verbal idea, which sounds good to me. Well, no, it, 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 let's let the chair answer the question. So all of this is very specifically laid out in the minutes from the, the April pool meeting, which every single one of you should have received. Um, so it, it was- it was April, April. You're talking about the April 17th minutes, right? Correct. Okay. Did everybody got a copy? You got a copy. I'm sure. I, I don't, sorry. I don't so why don't you, what? I don't believe. Why don't you, uh, Mr. Chair, direct the, can you please read what this recommendation is about lap lanes? Sure, I just got to switch into my other system. Part of my head being 
in your faces because I have to get two inches from the screen. He wasn't your pastor. No, I, 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 I owned that guy. Okay, so uh, it says in an effort to be. Is it, so is I, I can, it, I've is got it, it up now. So the, the first one is number five, which is water aerobics. I uh, unanimously approved the following. We'll start in June and go until closing. Um, Matt Trollinger, uh, I'm sorry, that there will be a fee in place. Residents will need to sign up through member splash. Um, number of lanes, no matter what, there will three lanes will be set aside. Additional lanes will be set aside based on the number of residents signed up using four per lane. At least one lap lane will always be available. That's number five. Uh, also, during water aerobics, there will be no lap lanes available for sign up through member splash. Open lanes will be first come, first serve. Um, then you go to number six. The stroke and technique pilot, two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, hold on. He was only asking about the. Uh, he was only asking about the lanes. Um, so I, well, my thought is, I'm not sure where we are here, uh, but uh, well, so you're you're asking asking questions. Questions. I, I, I want to hear. Hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Right yeah. now, you're asking questions of the chair. This is not the time for debate. So. Do you have any further questions of the chair? Can we defer this to another night? Does this have to be decided? Well, that, that, that's my question. That's not what we're doing right now. Then you'll ask the chair then. I, I'm just asking the chair. Yes, yeah, the chair. Do you have to have this answer tonight? Um, I, I need to, well, for the morning swim, yes. Water aerobics need to have it answered by June 1st. Um, well, and the stroke and technique we need answered by. When does um, when does morning swim start? May 15th. We can have another meeting. I don't want to special meeting. Um, I uh, hold on. We're not okay. Okay, have, I didn't have further questions. No, I don't really know. Okay, Councilor Bar, do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, could you repeat, Matt, the total amount that we we're proposing to pay the coach for the stroke and technique pilot this year? Eight hundred dollars. Thank you. Response. Is that your only question? Okay, Councilor Keller. Matt, do you think that there's a way to take these rules and to streamline them and make them just more bullet point, easy to? They're they're pretty long, you know. I can help you do that. We can do it together. But I, I think part of the problem that everyone's having, besides the hour that we're at, sorry to keep you make you go less, um, is that it's a little cumbersome. Do you guys agree? But I mean, it's, it's well, I mean, they're, they're, you're not discussing it yet. You're asking the question. Okay. But the problem is, is that at the work session, we did not, we should have had the town attorney codify these rules so they could be considered tonight. They were not ready then. Right. As Debbie is. They really yeah. weren't ready. Yeah. Well, that's our fault. We, but but okay. as we were developing well, things, yeah. it just. Okay. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Matt? No, I have no other okay. questions. Pass over to Matt, uh, the rules that you have come up with, which you detailed, can they be added as an addendum to the existing pool rules? So, I mean, that, separate, that is in uh, essence uh, what they, the, the, only, the only pool rules that need to be approved by the council are any new rules or changes to existing rules. Yes. So the in essence, that's what we're doing. We're 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 amending we're amending the current pool rules in the same way that we did like during COVID when we amended the pool rules to follow the CDC Where guidelines for it's face masks. Yeah. Um, you know, Sorry, I can't the hear pool rules are on the website. They're sort of codified, and then this is just coming up. And that's why, like in the past, we never actually had the the lanes there, um, but. You know, to to sort of answer Debbie's question, you know, I, th I think it's very easy to streamline, um, basically in the way I did it verbally. Um, but you know, the, we we were working on after April seventeenth under the assumption that again that this was as in prior years, you know, the the lane side of it and the you know the stroke and technique that something because it was under a thousand as well fell under you know, the purview of the, the town manager. But all that being said, I can write it up very succinctly. Um, we just, like I said, we have these different deadlines that can, you know, 
need to be met. Can you uh, give us a red line of the current rules for a motion at the May 15th work session? At the what? So if you can give us the, that, the rules streamlined as you just described, that we can then vote on at the May 15th work session. So the problem with the May 15th is that's after morning swim starts. Okay, okay. So if we, if we move up our work session, potentially we could meet that deadline. You just need it before the 15th. Well, we could also- I'm asking Matt that, it's yeah. a question for you. Uh, yeah, and, May 15th? And, I mean, the, the thing is, it's, it's I, I guess I sort of look at it as it's not that complicated. It's, it's, I mean, I could do it right now in the next five minutes and have it back to you before like, you know, you finish your discussion on it. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, in my opinion, it's, thank you, Matt. Okay, I just want to say hold something. On, hold on a second. You're not giving any further questions. No, thank you. Thank you. You guys were around that. Do you have any questions? So, um, so with this, just I, I guess I didn't really read it either. But so, um, so if you are signing up for early morning swim, and if you're signing up for the swim team, and you're signing up for the um, water aerobics, and you know we expect payment from all three of those groups right mm -hmm. and so would we expect payment for this extra coaching or we're saying we're going to pay for it up front and like why why would we not then like you know waive the fee for water aerobics like why would we waive it for just this so i'll answer that in sort of two different answers um first answer is if it was up to me all of this stuff would be free Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, that's also my wonderful world where, you know, everything and everything can be done at the pool and everyone can participate and there's no barrier to entry. Um, <clears throat> as far as this specific one, but, you know, basically we had actually initially made a proposal to have part of the budget be the waiving of the water aerobics mm -hmm. and the early bird swim fee. Um, we, that was then withdrawn as it just seemed like it was going to be a little too much and with the budget and just erring on the side of being fee conscious and offsetting our costs. Um, in addition, both of those programs are very well established, longstanding. As I said, with the early bird swim, we, we got 32 people signed up. Last summer, we had 24 people signed up. Um, you know, it, it's the, the programs are widely successful. The stroke and technique is brand new. And, and the idea is we want to get it to, I mean, targeted to residents of literally every age. And we, the, to, in, in doing so, we thought a best way to do it, especially since in our mind, $800 was a very small amount of money, especially in mean, like, for example, the water aerobics cost close to $5,000. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the early bird swim costs about 2,400. So the, the, the $800 cost to only have those 10 weeks, you know, 20 sessions, the idea being that we had already had that $2,000 allocated for summer programming. And we thought that this was a very good use of it to make it free. And possibly next year we add a fee. Um, you know, if, if this is wildly successful and we see there's a big demand and we say, you know what, maybe we should offset it with a fee. That's something we look at next year. Um, I hope that's the case. There's the chance that no one does this and it's just Dennis and the coach. Um, and, and then we say, okay, obviously this wasn't a good use and people aren't going to sign up. So if people aren't going to sign up when it's free, they're not going to sign up when it's, you know, a charge. So this is, that's why it's a pilot. That's why it's only those 10 weeks. And that was why we thought for this one specifically to not have a fee. Okay. Okay. Are you, do you, is that your last question? No, no, it's not a question. It's a no, 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 no. Okay, no comment. All right. You'll be able to. You, I yes, I asked my question. I my okay. question was answered. So now, now uh, I believe there are uh, residents and guests that want us to comment. Well, there's a few people here I think that might be commenting on the fees. I don't know if they're commenting on the rule. Well, they want. To, let's see what they have to say. Are there any comments from the from from the participants at this time? Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I guess Lucy, Lucy Freeman. Uh, so Lucy, Lucy, you're up first. Go for it. And don't forget to I, unmute yourself. Yeah, no, it just it wouldn't. My computer wouldn't unmute. Actually, Ruth was ahead of me. I was just wondering if the council 
was going to set the fee for water aerobics this year or if it was not? That's a question to Matt. Yeah, that we, I, I believe that I, I was talking to the town attorney. I, I think uh, perhaps made a mistake combining this and we would just adopt uh, a, a resolution um, adopting the, the fees for this pool season. So what's what's the? But I think that would be after after we after we figure out this with the pool rules. I think we would. Okay. It, okay. Then I'll keep listening. I'll go so, back. So and you'll take it up next. But do you have comments? So do you have I don't comments? Have, I don't have any comments about the lanes. I think that Matt covered it and covered well our discussion. Okay. So um, thanks, Lucy. So then afterward, we're gonna. You recommendation is you talk about fees. Uh, well, I did. I did full fees. Um, are they in the field. agenda item? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Mr. Mayor, I, I apologize, but I think we just need to draw the meeting to a conclusion now. But, and wait, 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 I think meeting. are there other? Hold on a second. I don't think are there are other residents that we should. Uh, well, yeah, Ruth. Ruth Albert is also here. Ruth, did you want to make a comment on this item? Um, may I comment on the fees since that was part of the agenda? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm just wanted to um, note that we're um, we're most interested in seeing water aerobics be as successful as it's been in previous years, and um, we hope that the council will not consider increasing the fee this year. Um, it's my understanding that uh, based on the $8 per session fee that we all paid last year, that more than $1,000 above and beyond the costs for the summer um, were brought into the town last year with an $8 fee. So we, um, and I presume those, the, those extra funds well went to help support the town. If that figure is right, um, we hope that you will not consider increasing the fee any further. Okay, thank you. Is it anything else? Yeah, that's it for now. Okay, so um, I'm now gonna turn it over at, to the, uh, the council president to lead the discussion. We already. Okay. I, I think the lot discussion was was brilliant, and I'm ready to approve all of the lot recommendations. We can just direct the pool committee to incorporate them into the pool rules. And I am happy. I'm just saying my position on the council. Is that the pool committee? Can, can you, we you, you have to vote on the right? And I'm, but the rules don't. They're not incorporated. What we're going to do is we're going to vote on directing the committee to put them into the rules. I guess we could direct Matt. Well, let's, a, let's ask. Let's ask. The yeah, Mr. Mayor, that would be fine. So ask the full committee, for example, to take the current rules and to mark it to show changes, and then the council can ratify that at its next work session. It will be on the same day the pool opens, but I think it would probably be okay to have. The one day of operation. Okay, so you're so you're recommending that the pool committee make some suggestions, specific suggestions that will be voted on uh, at a council meeting. But, but it's right not what I'm recommending because oh, okay. the pool. I apologize. The pool, sorry, the, the, what I heard from Matt is he needs this information. He needs decisions prior to our next work session on the fifteenth. We don't have the. Basically, we need to get it done tonight, and it shouldn't take that long because he's just laying out it. four people in the lane. We need two lanes. Two more people we need another lane. Just do it. I think and we'll just say we, the council, agree with that for the last. All right. We really agree. Yeah, okay. I, I yeah, can exactly. just cut cut and paste exactly what the problem is. So you need a motion. Yeah, Robin has a motion. Okay. That's what I have to try. Robin has a motion. Yes. So I'll try to propose a motion here, which is to uh, approve the 2023 pool rules and pool rules and fees as have been recommended here, um, with the amendment that we will add $800 to the 
budget for the pool. Well, no, but I think it's a separate. It had separate. It had separate. Okay, all right. We'll just do that. All right. Rules. A motion to approve the pool rules and fees as. As recommended by the great committee, great. with the addition of the lane uh, uh, system that Matt draw, uh, that was exactly. described at the council exactly. meeting. Okay, so wait a minute. Okay, so let's ask the that attorney if that's is that legally I think they're pretty close because I don't know because the the report doesn't have specific. Well, no, I think it's wrong. Is it is that acceptable? Well, they were described. The recommendation yeah, so. does have text in highlighted. That text needs to be put into actual verbiage for the rules. What we so heard, you, what you could have a motion tonight, motion to amend the pool rules as follows. Yes. And say the language. Okay, let's do it. Matt, can you give us the language? No, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. You have the language? I would say just to incorporate the language included in the pool committee minutes into the lap later. That's, right. that's a good idea. I don't, How about that? I think the tenant generation look at that because it's very confusing. The way it's written, it's confusing. It can be very streamlined. I think I, that is I, just a matter of whether it's how it's written, right? As long as those rules the, are there. The town attorney has enough. recommended that this be voted on right before the work session. And or 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 it's a meeting we could have for half an hour uh, at, at lunchtime. Yes, we so, are ready to vote on it but now. I don't, but, but this, but this is very, very messy. Mm -hmm. What you're all trying to do. Well, as a, as a, it's, it, what we can do if we approve the pool rules and fees at the moment, then they can collect the fees from the early morning swimmers and start them on May 15th, which is, which is, which is what we want. It's you know, what they want. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. This is probably um, okay. I, I'm ready to make a motion with the proposed language. Can I go ahead? Yes. Okay, it's going to be painful. Okay, motion to approve the 2023 pool rules and fees as recommended by the esteemed pool committee with the following amendments to, uh, to the rules uh, defined as follows. Amendment one, up to two swimmers may sign up for a lap lane at a time on the town's reservation system. When all lanes are filled by two swimmers each, a swimmer may seek to become a third swimmer in a lane. Lap lanes are meant to accommodate three plus swimmers. The goal is to find swimmers of the same speed. When three or more are swimming in a lane, all shut swim counterclockwise. Unoccupied spots may be filled on a first come first serve basis. Amendment two, at times when there are four or more swimmers per lane in all six lanes, lap swimmers should voluntarily restrict their continuous use of the lane to 45 minutes to give new swimmers the opportunity to swim laps. Second? Okay, is there a discussion? Ron, is that acceptable? Yes. Just okay. What about the $800? Does this include $800? No, that's a separate, separate issue. Okay, so is that the only rule? Okay, is there further? Okay, that's one of the rules. Matt, does that cover? Is there further? Well, yeah. Do we want to add that we approve the Pilot or no, we're separate. 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 so is there further discussion? This is a motion to amend the pool rules as stated by Council Member. I second. Is there further no, is there, is there further second. discussion on the motion? Ready to and vote. I think that the town attorney okay, we're ready to vote. Yeah, approved. Hold on a second. All right. Does the town attorney have enough information to draft this? This is weird. Thank you. Approved. Hearing none, all this in favor. Uh, okay. Now, is there a motion regarding the? Um, okay. So we we have a motion. The pilot. The pilot. Go ahead. All right. Motion to approve the pilot for stroke and technique training with an allocation of eight hundred dollars for this year. Can I amend? Is that? there a second? No. Well, I just want to. No, 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 because you didn't say it right. It's it, the eight hundred dollars is part of the. This, the, the pool committee budget. It has a budget of $2,000. We don't need to approve the amount. We just need to approve. So, 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 so wait a minute. No additional wait, money. That's, no additional before, money. Before, okay, from the budget. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Matt is no before, additional money. Before you make a motion, Matt has some information that you need, which is this is actually uh, a requirement to amend the 
the contract. So Matt, please address. Yeah, I, what I, what I would recommend, I think, is that we the money's already been budgeted, but on. I think you would approve the town manager to sign off on an addendum to the existing pool contract to account uh, up to nine hundred dollars to account for the stroke and eight hundred. All right. Okay, so motion then is direct. to approve an addendum to the existing pool contract to uh, allow the town manager to approve uh, stroke and technique training um, up to nine hundred to eight hundred. He said nine hundred. I would say nine. It, All right, up to nine hundred. Okay. Second. second. Is there a second? Okay. Is there a discussion? Okay. I yes. just, I just, you know, one question. Yes. All yes. Say, oh, you have Mr. Town Attorney. Does this, doesn't this require um, your review of the of this contract? And also, isn't there shouldn't there be some kind of requirement that that uh, the participants sign waivers? As to the the contract question, I have enough information. I mean, as to waiver, that's a policy decision, a good idea. But do, but do the, do, doesn't the SWIM team members sign waivers? I don't know, Mr. Because I'm just one, yeah. the same sure. way, the same way the council gave so much uh, consideration to establishing the 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 the, the, uh, the B project that, you know, I'm just concerned that there needs to be some proper review of this because we want to make sure that we're not exposed to liability. From That's all I'm saying. On what? Can, can I say something on that real quick? No, 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 yeah. Sorry. No, but, but, uh, uh, let's, 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 from whom on what? To, to the participants. We okay. Have participants. In any case, is there further discussion on the motion? No. You're not all this on paper. I have a discussion. Did you record that? They already voted. We should just create. You still discuss. I can't so well, I just don't think it's really fair for like the you know people who don't swim laps and who want to do um the water aerobics and you know the early morning swim. Like if if two thousand dollars is set aside to make the pool like you know have programs to bring more people in, it's we're taking a very narrow usage of that money. And you know, we're saying that we're gonna pay for people to have like extra stroke and turn lessons. Shannon, at the well, moment we know passed. how many people are gonna sign up. Yeah. Okay. No, I understand that. I'm just so I can make a comment let, too. Let, you let don't have go, to tell let, me let that my comment is here. wrong. When we get the numbers we can have to see what yeah. we will see this is why this is why this is you know I would take the responsibility for this because we should have uh, pointed all this out and it should have uh, been spoon fed to all of you because there's a lot of issues related to all the things that you decided. And it's it's not good to do all this without a good process, but in any case, it's been done now. Now it's time for the manager's report. The only thing I'll add to my report is that we, we actually got about 15, thousand dollars in a class action lawsuit from Monsanto. So we got that added to our budget. So <laughs> it was from some I wish you had told me before the earlier budget and then now you're making me feel better. These, our, our farm fields maybe it was well it's from the it was from like exposure to some cancer causing agent from the 40s to the 70s or something. Oh, yeah. Like so I think it was a nationwide thing. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Well, Thanks very far. Do you have any questions? No okay. questions. Thank you. That's our no. That's our Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Good meeting. Thank you so much. Best meeting ever. Good The best. Best counsel, best mayor, best lawyer, you need to be. This is why I'm here. And you said, right. you're, you're, Shannon, you're absolutely right. But the That's it. Is that that I didn't when you flag it the member squad, properly. You agreed that it should have all been appointed the the because it should not be voted. It should, should not be written so, the night of the council. And it's now it's now the whole committee has Okay. Yeah, I mean, and you know, people have skin in the game when they sign up and pay fees for things, you know.
And like, I just, I don't, I don't know why, I don't know why I mean, that gets like a pass for oh, no fee. And, and I mean, I don't think there's enough, and this, this stroke and thing, that, that's one person who wants. Exactly. And now we're in the, the whole town. And now, and, now, and now we have, I mean, even it's only like dollars, but still. It's still, I mean, it could be used that's for an ice cream that's soap shop. You try it for a year, it's only one person, we dropped it. You know, that's well, that. I mean, it could well, be used for an ice cream soap shop. Right? I mean, you know. the batting cage. I mean, uh, the ba batting cage always comes up. The batting cage, nobody's using it. It's a way. How many and, no, and, and you know what? The yeah. batting cage. How much money is in there? Oh, I can watch a lot of stuff in your drug. They're like the tennis court. It's also, it's also, it makes sense. We were kind of still deliberating. But so, so it's more than like, um, like, Robin, you know that they listed that the amount of stuff here, not so the one in Surrey. You know, 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 Everything I was to do. But it was also the same. It was all the other. Yeah, like, I understand that. I think that was the mustard. Okay. But if you're not doing it, it's not going to be able to try and get something.